everyone and just uh, just give you a little bit more support in figuring out how you do assignment number two. And assignment number two, you define a mutation that you want to make this semester using CRISPR. And then I want you to go through and then you need to go ahead and design how you're going to do all the steps. And one of the steps is you have to design and create and figure out the sequences of the oligonucleotides to be able to accomplish this change. And what I have here on the screen in front of me is, is just the protein sequence and the gene sequence for yeast FO13. And you see that I have the amino acid sequence on top and the DNA sequence below it. So what I'm going to do is, for an example, I'm going to create the mutation that's in the, uh, on the, one of your possible mutations of alanine 72 to valine. So I gave that to you as an example and a few other things. So I figured I'd just go ahead and just keep that theme going. So you find out here's 61, there's about 70, there's 72 right here. So what I do to keep, to keep track of where I am, I use colors to mark things. You'll, you'll notice that through the semester that I like to use colors. So I'm going to mark that in red, and I'm going to make it bold. And notice that uh, the font for all these sequences and all this stuff is Courier New. Um, because it's all monospaced, so everything lines up nicely. If you're having trouble getting things lined up, change all your font. Change your font to Courier or Courier New, and everything will line up and make it a lot easier. Now the codon will be here, and that'll be GCA codes alanine. And I'll go ahead and uh, I'll highlight that. I'll make that green. Now let's make it, let's go ahead and make it red. And I'll make it bold again so I know where I am. So the next thing I'm going to do is I need to find the sequence to be able to allow Cas9 to recognize and clip the genome very near your mutation site. So we want to clip somewhere in this area in the sequence right here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy probably about nine bases, maybe ten bases. Just do control C or command C. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Wyrick website. There's a tool here. Let's go I'll, I'll back up and show you how I got here. Um, the link in Blackboard is this Wyrick Bioinfo 2.sb smb.wsu.edu CRISPR HTML. So what I do is I click on this guide RNA target sites for specified use yeast gene. In this box, I'm gonna type fo 13 and I'm gonna hit submit. What I have here or all the, what it does is the software will recognize all the possible guide sequences and what it does is it makes them, it reports the guide sequence here as capital letters and then the gene sequence for the gene is all in lowercase. So we'll be able to use that as a guide to find out what these guide sequences are. So I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and go to find and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in that sequence. And you'll see that through here, out through here, it highlights that sequence all the way through. And what I do is to figure out is I want the sequence that I deal with, I want to make the guide sequence as close as possible. So I'm screening, looking down through here, looking at these capital letters. That's not close enough. That's not close enough there. This is getting closer, getting closer, still getting closer. This is still not there, but you notice here the capital, the highlighted yellow is within the guide sequence. So this is another, this is a possibility. This is another possibility. And here's another possibility. I'm going to go ahead and um, arbitrarily choose this one first because I, because I just see something that will probably be informational. So what I'll do is I'll look here and what I do is I look to see where the either the NGG sequence is or the CCN sequence. Because the PAM site, which you need to make a mutation at, 
it winds up being a silent mutation is intellectually the harder one to figure out and understand. So I want to go ahead and do this TGG sequence. So I'll need to change one of these two Gs to another nucleotide, and that'll disrupt the, the PAM site. So I know that this is the GCT is the alanine that I'm interested in, GCA, and I want to know there's a TTTGG downstream from there. So what I'll do is I'll click back on the document here, and I'll see that this TTT encodes phenylalanine, and this GGT here, which would be the which would be part of the PAM site, that that this T is part of the PAM site, and this GG. So we're gonna have to we'd have to change one of these two G's. But if you change one of those two G's, this codon will no longer encode glycine. Let me go through and let me pull this down so you can see that this codon table, which I have in Blackboard for you, you notice the glycine is all GG, GGU, GG, you know, GGT, and so on like that. So we, that's not a good codon to use. So let's go ahead and I'll go ahead and let's go to the go to another site. Well, I know from looking in the past that this CCC here works because this is the area where there's a serine here and there's a number of different codons for serine. Serine, as you might notice, the nice thing about serine is that you have these four codons and you have these two codons that encode serine. So that gives us a lot of flexibility in making changes in there. So I'll look around and I, I think this CCG, so there's that, then we'll need to change these one of these two C's and let's look at that. So this GCA is where the alanine is. So we know that it's about five bases down. So we'll count down one, two, three, four, five. So there's the CCG, which is the PAM site. So what I do in a PAM site is I will go ahead and make it underlined. So that's the PAM site that I potentially want to use. Let's see if that works. If I change, so the serine codon here, I'm going to change that to purple. And change that to purple and bold. So I can see that. So I just need to change one of these two C's. And I know that TCC can be readily changed because the serine codons here are, there's TCC here. So I can change that second C to any other base that I want to change. So to go ahead and uh, to further this on a little bit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this line, do Control C, and then I'm going to paste it in, and I will line everything up. So this is the DNA sequence line that I'm, uh, for the changes I'm going to make, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing up here and paste it in. So be like much like the form that I gave you, I gave you in Blackboard. And I want to make that change. I want to go ahead and change this alanine to a valine, V A L. Since this is what I'm going to change to, I'm going to change that to a different color, and I choose green. So I want to go ahead and change this, make that green, and I don't. Now I'll have to figure out what I want to do for changing an alanine to a valine. Let's go back to the codon chart. So I have alanine here, which is GC any codon, any, any base. And then valine here is GU and any base. So all I need to do is change the middle codon, the C, to a T. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So this C, I changed this to a T, and now that encodes a valine. So I have that spot. So I know what the mutation I need to make is. So this GTA, this GCA in the wild type needs to be changed to GTA for the mutant. Now, what I want to do is I need to make a change here. And as you know, TCC, TC, any, any base works. And this, go ahead and just change that to an A. And so I, now the mutation I have is TCC, the silent mutation. So TCA will encode serine. So I now have, these are the mutations that I need to make. Now, go ahead and what I would do is I would paste this whole thing into that form that I gave you in Blackboard. I'll just control C, copy. And I have a copy of that form here. So in this box here, I want you to highlight what I put in there and just delete it, hit delete, and hit paste. So you have all those sequences in there. So now you have them, they're all color coded. I'll be able to look at them and see if they make sense and, and when I grade your assignment. The next part, the harder part in a lot of respects is to do the repair template. So let's go ahead and work on that next. So what is the DNA that we're gonna to synthesize to do this? Well, what I do is I want to make the mutations to be about the center of the sequence that we synthesize. It doesn't absolutely have to be that way, but it, it seems to intellectually make a lot of sense. So I have 60 bases here. We want to make it 60 bases. And just by coincidence, I can copy this and do Control C. Now I'm going to open APE. APE has a nice little tool here that I can use. I will paste that in. What I'll also do is copy that again, and I will go ahead and put it in here. Control B. I have that sequence. So I'm going to call this repair template one. It's all nice and color coded. Now, repair template two is the reverse complement of that. And what I'll do here is I'll copy this. I already did, so, and I'll go into APE. There's the AP menu. So I, I pasted it in here. What I'll do is go to Edit, and there's a little feature here, Reverse Complement. And what I did is hit that, and it made the Reverse Complement. I'll copy that, and paste in here. And what I'll do to make things consistent font-wise, I'll highlight this area right here. Go to New Courier, Courier New, and it'll be in there. And so now you have the two sequences in there. If you want, you can go through and figure out where the bases are, but I just kind of want to see the one chain and know that it's a complement. I can quickly look to see if it is. There's three A's here. It ends with three T's there, so I know that complements the two A's here, so I know that's the complement. That's all you need to do. And the hardest part is, one, choosing your mutation, deciding on what your hypothesis you're going to test this semester is, and then generate these series of sequences. Oh, I forgot. I almost forgot. I had to tell you in this other box up here to go ahead and paste the sequence information from the Wirework Lab website. And what I'll do here is, OK, so Wirework website right here. Pull it down here. So the one that we used 
reset here. Was this one? So what I would do is I would I want you to copy everything in this cell right here. Copy that, and I want you to paste that into the sequence. And it'll tell me which oligos you need to order. So here you go. They're in place here, and I'll be able to check your work, and we'll be ordering oligonucleotides for you to do your experiment. As, you, as you'll see in the future, anytime you have a question, feel free to send me an email. Uh, you know, or if you have other questions, you can always ask me when I'm in the lab. We will see you later, and thanks for listening. Hope this helps. Okay, bye.